So let's talk about how to do it. How do you wonder? Now, let me just tell you right off the bat, it's harder than it seems. And I realize that. And there's always going to be roadblocks and there's always going to be times where you feel like you just don't know where the hell you're going with something. Uh, just embrace that for what it's worth. Take a break, drink a beer, do whatever you gotta do in order to loosen yourself back up and then get to it. So even though there's some obstacles on your way to wondering, you're going to have to learn how to do it and learn how to become better at it if you want to do well when you write a paper for Seth. All right? So how to begin? Now, wondering begins and ends in questioning. The key is to learning how to ask more refined questions. And what you want to aspire towards is asking questions that unveil new ideas for you. Two biggest mistakes I'd say in the beginning is asking questions that look for answers. And then the second biggest mistake is not reasoning through your responses. If you're looking for an answer, you're looking for an end. And the nature of wondering is that it opens up new things. And so it's opening a path. It's giving you a place to go from where you are. It's not looking for the end. Answers are ends. Instead of looking for answers, look for responses. So what I want to do now is show you the depths that wondering can take you to. So I'm going to start with an example that is not wondering and then I'm going to take you deeper and deeper and deeper and show you where you can go with wondering. And the way that I'm going to do this is I am going to use the Gorgias as an example. <music> To begin with, you can not wonder. And not wondering is asking a question like, well, is rhetoric powerful? Yes, rhetoric is powerful. That is an example of not wondering. There's no reasoning to it. There's no looking at the structure of the ideas. There's no thinking involved with that. There is the beginning of looking, I guess. I mean, I feel like I'm being charitable saying something like that. A little deeper than that is what I'd call weak wondering. Is rhetoric powerful? So we're using the same question. And this wondering looks like this. Yeah, rhetoric is powerful because look at politicians. All they do is talk and they're in charge of everything. Now there's a lot of problems with that, but it is, I will give it, it is the beginning of wondering. It's not very good wondering. Uh, it thinks of an analogy in, in the way that the world works today, which is always a good start thinking about how something might work and how I could identify it today. But it makes all of these assumptions and then it simply asserts. It assumes that everybody knows what power is. It assumes that everybody knows what politicians do. It assumes that the reason why politicians are powerful is because they talk. Uh, and there's a lot of interesting questions that you could pursue in this, but none of them are asked by somebody who wonders. Is rhetoric powerful? Yeah, politicians are powerful and they all they do is talk and... And, and they're in charge of everything. It's just, it's weak wondering. It's asserting assumptions and it's not going any further than that. So that's just not going to cut it. Now we dig a little bit deeper and we get to what I guess I'll call moderate wondering. And moderate wondering is going to get you pretty far in high school. It's not going to get you very far in a paper with Seth. So let me point out a couple of characteristics of a moderate level of wondering that leads to a moderate level of a paper. Where did I put my notes? Characteristics of moderate wondering. Um, it asks a lot more questions. Obviously there was only one question asked with the not wondering and the weak wondering example. And these Questions, they don't dig very deep. They don't take you very far. They don't really, um, they're not vigorous. They don't allow for you to get anywhere with them. And they do allow assumptions. And also, this kind of wondering often leaves questions unanswered and unexplored. So maybe you wonder about a whole bunch of questions, but you don't pursue any of them. That's that's not taking it very far. It's not taking it far enough. Um, and also it is incautious with words. There's a lot of words that are similar. They mean things that are like each other, but they're not the same thing. And so if you 
don't carefully choose your words, then you can make the mistake of not saying exactly what it is that you mean. All right, I want to interject a quick little writing tip, all right, it, it, and it applies to wondering. Sometimes when people are having trouble writing papers, Seth advises that you should ask yourself a lot of questions. Start with questions and then start thinking about them, and that's the way to get going with your paper. Now, instead, what some people do is they ask a whole bunch of questions, they write them down in their paper, and they make it a paragraph. That is not what Seth means. What he means is think of a bunch of questions, reason through the questions, find something that really holds your mind and your attention, and then write a paper on that topic. So don't make the mistake of putting a whole bunch of questions in the middle of your paper. Here's an example of moderate wondering. Is rhetoric powerful? What is power anyway? Where does power come from? How powerful are words? The dictionary says power is the ability to do or act, capability of doing or accomplishing something, political or national strength, possession of control or command over others, authority or ascendancy. How could rhetoric be powerful then if it has to do or act? Talking can't do that by itself. People act. So rhetoric can't be powerful. People are. Like that bumper sticker, guns don't shoot people, people shoot people. So this makes me think about Polis saying that bad people and talkers are both powerful. And really, if I think about what I already said, only bad people could be powerful because they talk. And talkers may or may not be powerful. So there's some problems with this level of wondering. The ones that I stated before, it asks a lot of questions, it doesn't give them answers. It has the dreaded dictionary definition, the appeal to authority. Um, it doesn't reason through what power is. It simply gives an assertion of what an authority says power is. It does begin to reason with this thinking about rhetoric and acting and people. But this kind of reasoning doesn't unveil anything for us because we already know that rhetoric doesn't act on its own. We already know that people are the agents that rhetoric would act through. Um, and it doesn't take us anywhere with the power because it's made that assumption already. So the reasoning that it does do, it goes somewhere, it attempts to, it's trying to think about ideas, but it just doesn't take us anywhere that we don't already know. And it brings us to this point of, oh, well, people are the powerful ones and not a thing. And that just hasn't opened up anything at all. And at the end, it does get a little bit confused. This bad word usage, this incautious word usage of interchanging bad people for tyrants and talkers for orators, and then not really explaining and getting a little confused about what's trying to be said about why it is that bad people are powerful versus talkers being powerful when the sort of foundation for that idea following through hasn't been laid down. This is like having a bicycle with training wheels on it. So yeah, you can ride a bike, but you can't do it on your own yet. You need quite a bit of help. <laughs>